The World Open is back, now in its sixth season, and with its strongest lineup yet, the competition has never been so fierce. 48 of the world's poker elite have traveled to the Palm Beach Casino in London, all hoping for a piece of the $480,000 prize pool. There are only two spaces left at the final table, and tonight, as the last heat concludes, we find out who locks up one of those spots and who gets a second chance in the runners-up heat. But before we rejoin that match, let's have a look at what's happened so far. It's massive. You were making a move and I got stuck in the middle of it. Come on then. Well, well, don't keep on, just pass. Ace-Jack doesn't seem to run good against King-Queen usually. King-Queen's pretty hard to lose to. Cheer up, Jake. You still got the titles. Worst well, down in the pack, it's still good. It was suited. It was suited. Nearly. You nearly pushed. Oh! It's come Ace-King-10. Oh! Both players have flopped two pair. Good luck, everyone. Here's how the leaderboard stands. Fabian Quos on top, Dixie Dean doing well. Look at these stats though, Timoshenko so aggressive and Tyrone Cross, the reason he's short stacked is because he hasn't played any hands. Lines up to seven and 15,000. I'm thrilled to be sitting next to the legend, the man Mike Sexton and Mike Cross here, short stacked, about 12 big blinds. Got to move. Now well, here's a hand he's going to play. Guarantee you that. Pass. Well, I'm wrong. Folds a king queen. Now you're in a shorthanded poker game and you don't play king queens. You're going to have a hard time getting the trophy. Hey, look, at this, look at this though. Look at this though. I mean, Ace Jack sitting right behind him. I know. I don't know. Well, raise I don't care what's sitting behind you. In my <laughs> view, you've got to raise with king queen. <laughs> You know, Fabian's got a 10 6 offsuit here. Hard to find many worse hands. Yet perhaps he thinks Tamashenko is just going to start going at it and that he can take the pot away from him by coming over the top. To 84, well, he's come right over the top with a 10 6 offsuit. Dixie out of the way. Casella's going to go south. And now what's Tamashenko going to do with an ace jack? And if you have to say if he passes here, give the round to Fabian and the psychological edge as well. Well, tough decision for Tamashenko. You can make a case for everything for calling, raising or folding. When the great players are in form and in the zone, they get it right. Timoshenko going to take his time here. And if he does make a re-raise, it's got to be all in. Is it fold or all in? I'm all in. Yeah, it is. Well, he has gone all in. What a play by Timoshenko. Boy, every time he takes a long time, he always makes the right decision. So for him, that I'm old sure. axiom yeah. you hear about sure. think long, think wrong, sure, do that something. doesn't apply to yeah. Tamashenko. I can tell you that. He thinks long, he gets it right. In the last 18 months, I've had a pretty good run in tournaments. I won the World Poker Tour Championship, and then I won the World Championship while I'm poker. So I've been uh, pretty hot the last 18 months, and I hope to continue that. Winning those two tournaments meant a lot to me. It's basically what you play poker for, to have a chance to win two of the biggest titles in the game. I think part of the reason why my form's so hot is because I always continue to learn and I always continue to strive to improve my game. I, n I never stop learning. I, I treat poker as any other profession and I know that to stay with the times, you have to continue evolving your game and uh, getting better. So I, I never stop learning, I never stop um, reviewing my sessions, you know, I never stop trying to plug leaks that I have in my game. I think to make it in poker in the long term, uh, you, you really have to just continue evolving. You know, you have to continue getting better as, as people get better. You have to always try to stay a step ahead and if you can manage to do that, you should be able to stay at the top in poker for a while. Tamashenko with the chip lead. 
Just been biding his time, biding his time, biding his time through those first few levels. But all of a sudden, you could see a new sheriff in Dodge. Now well, back to the action on Tyrone. He's finally picked up a hand. Surely he can't throw this away. He's got ace jack. We saw him fold a king queen a second ago. Well, he's going all in with it. All in. Well, he doesn't have to make any more decisions about this hand. He just moved all in. Pass. You have to give this guy credit for having a hand as he hadn't made a play yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, Dixie's got ace queen. Oh, He's got him dominated. Mike, if Tyrone ordered eggs for breakfast, they'd be rotten. You've got to call here in this spot with an ace queen. Even if the guy's got tens or jacks, you're still about 50 50 to win the pot. Oh, cool. Well, he's made the call, and he's going to be very happy to see Tyrone's hand. He's dominating him. Ace queen versus ace jack. So Tyrone, playing virtually no hands at this table, finally moves all in and looks up to see he's dominated. Hey, I'm surprised he didn't get lost on the way to the casino this morning, Tyrone <laughs> Cross. He's made every other wrong turn, and, and it's hasn't come, been his fault. Well, it's come ace, queen, ten, so even though Dixie's flopped the top two pair, Cross not dead yet. He can catch a king to win this pot, but he must have a king. Well, a deuce comes off, so we're down to the river card. Tyrone Cross from Australia must have a king. Doesn't happen as an eight comes off. So the Australian heading back down under. Aussie Millions champion, very good player, nice young man. Nothing dry like toast. 874,000 for Dixie. We've just lost Tyrone from this competition. Some days it just doesn't go your way. It seemed like that today, yeah? Uh, yeah, I had uh, Praz was three betting me quite often, and you know, Evgeny on my left, so it's pretty tough to open a pot. And you no, know, it just didn't seem to make any hands all day, so I guess when that happens, it's hard to get anything going in this sort of format. Welcome back to the Palm Beach Casino in London. We've lost Tyrone Cross from the table, but the action is continuing. So let's get down there and take a look. Well, four players left. The winner advancing to the finals. The runner up getting an opportunity to play in what we call a turbo heat, where the winner of that heat will join the finalist with a shot at the big dough. Mike, I know Dixie pretty well. We've seen him play in this format a couple times and in his mind right now, with the chips he's got, he expects to get to the final two at least. And Dixie Dean, felt a little jolt of adrenaline here. Wow, Dixie with the jack five off suit. It's gonna raise it and come right over the top, 90,000. I wish I knew what he's seen. Well, Frank Casella looks down and sees an ace queen. Now the pot's been raised and re-raised. What do you do now oh. with an ace queen? It's quite amazing, really. If Dixie folds this hand. I'm all in. Oh, Casella's getting all in anyway. Well, he's the short stack. He's picked up a premium hand here in his eyes. Pretty daring play, though. One of these guys could easily have ace king, but that's not the case. Well, Jesse, I'm going to fall out of my seat if he calls here. No, pass. Going to reel and Reagan. My kingdom for a horse. Three rounds of really nice. South London Dixie playing a little got, horsey so there. I haven't done a lot of that. First off, I'm out for the ice king. I don't think you do that with ice king. Well, it's the four tops on this table, and Frank Casella there, Mike, you know, he's feeling pretty good because he's got his uh, stack up to about 450 without having any danger at all. Still in fourth place, though, is Frank Casella. Chip leader right now, of course, is Dixie. Pass. 
us? My guess is Dixie had a little word with himself, a little private spot. word. Dixie, cool. don't do anything silly. You know what I mean? Because that play with the Jack Five cost him 100000 He is the chip leader. Now well, action's on Fabian. He looks down at two queens in the small blind, is loving it. Raise to 40000 He's going to raise it to 40000 Uh-oh. Dixie, don't do anything silly. <laughs> well, he's, I'm he's, sure he's he feels like he did something silly a minute ago. Yeah. Re-raising with a Jack-5 offsuit. That didn't work. Here he's got the 10-9 of diamonds. Might want to see a flop. He's in position. Right. And that's the case. Two to sign. He's going to have to flop a lot to beat two queens here. You he can't blame for taking the flop off, but he doesn't want a piece of it. That's a good piece, actually. Wow, he's flopped a flush draw. Now, Fabian has check folded in, in this exact situation uh, against Dixie a couple times earlier. I wonder if he might go for a check raise. No, he's going to lead out and make the continuation bet. He's going to get raised, and we can see all the chips going in. 48,000. 48,000 is the bet by Fabian. And if I was Dixie, I'd just come over the top right now. You only have 10 high. Just in case he's got ace queen high or something like that. You can win the pot right here. If you don't, you just got to try to hit your flush. Yeah, I hear that, Mike. Too much of a chance for Dixie that he could push Fabian off with this raise, but that's not the story. This hand's going to play itself, folks. Now you're going to see an all in bet by Fabian. Certainly, that's what I'd do if I was him right now. I'd just say, if you can beat this, good luck to you. These young guys, they always look for a different way when things seem automatic, but there is no other way here. No, he's going to move all in like anybody else would do. And now, Dixie's got to make a decision. Does he want to gamble with the flush draw here? This is a massive pot if he makes this call. I wonder if he's going to be swayed by the winner take all nature of yeah, this cool. of this heat. Well, I think you're priced in to gamble here with right. the flush draw. You don't like it. Even if your opponent has a bigger flush draw, you can still catch a nine or a ten or back door straight to win this pot. Doesn't matter what he has, you're drawing live. Well, he's cracking his jaw bones here. Cool. cool. And he's made the call. I like the call. Well, I'd call too. I think both these players played this hand exactly like it looked like it was going to get played out. Sometimes you just got Come hands you got to go with. Now let's see who's going to be lucky. Seven figure pot. Over a million Ooh. dollar pot. Well, a four comes off. That doesn't One help time. him. Come on. He knows Please, he needs a diamond on. to win this pot. Nothing else will do for him. Ooh. Well, it's a five. So Fabian is going to take a big chip lead at this final table. Dixie's not out, but he is down. The hand played itself. Oh, Dixie back about where he started. And for the German, Fabian Quos, he's played quite well, had that big early double up, and now the later, the later one was even bigger. Fabian Quos is a young poker talent from Germany. He's been po playing poker for quite some time. Yeah, I started in 2006 with um, $50 given to me um, for free by an online poker site. Then I managed to build up my bankroll with that money. Would you consider yourself more of an online player or more of a live player, or is it something that you're trying to mix up? I started online, but I, when I started, I always watched the WSOP and WPT on television, and always, of course, wanted to be part of that. And yeah, I started to travel live tournaments like one and a half years ago, and so I'm mixing it up quite well. How do you feel playing under the TV lights? Does it get to you at all? Um, I got used to it. I think it's like, like a test at the university. Like f the first five or ten minutes, you're a little bit excited. But yeah, I think I got used to it pretty much. Well, hopefully you settle in here too, and good luck out there. Thank you. Thanks. You just know we're going to have a great final table at this World Open because all the heats are so strong on paper. Oh, and when you watch them, oh, the play is so good. Dixie straight all in. He's got about 20 big blinds, 19 actually. Well, he's got the king four diamonds. Just making a move here, but it's not going to work as Timoshenko has picked up two queens. He, he's good, definitely going all in too. 
Oh dear. Yeah, pardon me, it was a 19 big blind, it's 270. It's only about 13. And um, Dixie at least has an overcard. Dixie's tournament life on the line. He's the underdog right now. He is looking for a cowboy to lasso his opponent. Doesn't come on the flop. It's 9-9-10. Nine, nine, Dixie going to have to catch a king to win this pot. I don't think so. No <laughs> more. Can't win it even if a jack comes off where it makes it straight. Tamashenko has made Good queens point. full Good of point. nines. Good Good point. Point. And Dixie's going to have to go whistling Dixie over in the bar because he's not going to do it on this final table. Yeah, Stonewall Jackson and Dixie Dean both headed home, South London. It was a good ride, though, for Dixie this evening. Well, that patience early on certainly paying off for Tamashenko now. He's the chip leader with three players left. And he has got to really be feeling good about his chances to win this heat now. Well, Tamashenko raising with the ace deuce on the button. And Fabian has the ace three of diamonds. Yeah. Fabian's going to make the call. And look at a flop. It was just a min raise from 20,000 to 40. And Frank says, you know, I can't pass this price up. There's 100,000 out there. Only cost me 20 more to call. Even though I've got junk, a five deuce, I'm priced in, I'm gambling. I don't blame him. And the flop comes seven, six, five. And Fabian has flopped the nut flush draw and a check. bottom in straight draw, but he's checked. He's going to okay. check raise for all the dough here, but that's a scary flop to bet into when two guys have called you. You know they don't have real big cards that have re-raised you. Tamashenko well aware of that situation and just checks it, and wisely so. And now the diamond comes off, the nut flush for Fabian. And he is in hog heaven right now. He just hope one of them slow playing a flop or a big hand or a set or something. And we'll make a play at him. Got the best hand possible, yet he's leading out and betting. Well, Casella can't beat much, however. No, he's got bottom pair. Has a sucker flush draw. I can't see any chance he's going to make this call. That could easily hit a queen on the turn. Well, you're drawing virtually dead. They both go away. <sighs> well, there's a case. And I think Fabian should have checked on the turn there. I mean, you just have to give them a chance. If they had a straighter trip, they're certainly going to bet because they're fearful of another diamond coming up. You're still going to win a monster pot, but you give them an opportunity to bluff at it by checking at them. While Casella waiting to get his chips in the middle, Timoshenko is sort of dishing them over to Fabian. Who has stepped it up? He's hit a couple hands. Well, right now he's holding over these guys, Jesse. No doubt about it. Since we started three-handed, he definitely has held the best cards and made the best hands. Here he raised with an ace nine. He just made the minimum raise, though, from twenty thousand to forty. Which means, I believe, Tamashenko's priced in to make the call, which he is. Yeah, on the one hand, he hasn't done very well calling before the flop against quotes. On the other hand, such a nice hand in price. Well, and there you see what's happened. Tamashenko was out, flopped him. He's got two tens. He checks. Let's see what Fabian's going to do. He's going to check right behind him. Fabian just trying to avoid trap situations. Or if he bets his opponent raises, he's got to throw his hand away. I think you have to bet two tens now, don't you? No. Nope. Tamashenko is checking. Now if you have ace high, you're just happy to check it down, try to win the pot. That's what Fabian has done. Four comes off. You got to go for value here or do you hope that Fabian tries to bet his ace for value on the river again? Timoshenko's pretty sure he's winning. I'm just a little surprised he didn't bet on the turn here, but 
He is going to bet on the river. And we've seen Fabian pay guys off of these high several times at this final table. One thing that has been a detriment for Fabian tonight is he has not had a good record when calling bets on the river. Been burned every time so far. Maybe he thinks third time's a charm. Dixie yeah. Dean did it. Fabian just going to say, I'm going to keep calling with Ace High on the River when these guys check, 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 and then bet until I get it right. Yeah, yeah. Casella did it. And again, he pays it off, and again, it's the wrong decision. <laughs> yeah, you either have a 10 or nothing. What's that? You either have a 10 or nothing. Two point four million in chips spread out among our three players here with the blinds of 15 and 30. Frank Casella through no fault of his own really down to 15 big blinds. It's just the blinds. Well he's going to go with this hand. He's got two sevens. Is anybody running him off of him? You have a relatively short stack in relation to the big blind. You pick up a pair. You're happy to get it in. Yeah, he's going to raise with the intention of following the rest through. You can hear that hum of the casino now. It's really starting to fill up in here. Lovely Palm Beach, the nighttime gamblers. Oh, now Fabian has a small pair. Will he make the over the top raise here? If so. We could have a dramatic switch in terms of chip count in. among these three players. He's gone all in. Well, I don't see Casella going anywhere here with two sevens. I call. call. And he has made the call. call, call. And yeah. Just like that, Casella with a great a shot sixes. to double up. Oh, that's great good. shot to go chip leader, as a matter of fact, Mike. I mean, 80% of the time, these sevens are going to hold. Here's the flop, 8-5 do. So far, so good for Frank Casella. Great opportunity to double up here. 10 on the turn. We are down to the river card. If it's not a three, Frank Casella not only is going to double up, he's going to take the lead. It's an ace. So just like that, what a turn of events we've got here with three players left. Fabian Quas down to 500,000 and Casella, big chip leader, this player of the year. That's how you win two bracelets. Well, it is. And he was very fortunate to find his opponent with an under pair, just what you dream about in that situation. We're getting closer to finding out who will take that spot at the final table. So join us after the break for more action here at the Party Poker World Open 6. This sets up nice three-handed, the two young guns and Casella. And you know, Quos just coming off a big final table at the WPT. You have Genny with the two biggest caches in 2009, but that was last year. Casella's the man in form right now. Well, Casella has not made any moves yet in this three-handed game. He's going to try to make one right here out of the small blind nice. with a 6-3. Tamashenko has the 10 8 of spade, the kind of hand you like to see a flop with. And it cost him 45,000 more to make the call. Well. And he's done it. So we're going to have a flop here, Jesse. Yeah. What a flop for Tamashenko. Flopped a flush draw and a gut shot straight draw. Casella's flopped bottom pair and checked. Suspecting something. You probably don't figure 10 high is the best hand. So you don't mind betting and just taking down the pot. If the guy raises you, you got a hand you're going to go with. I say fire out here. 
The Ukrainian American agrees with you. WPT champion, W Coop champion. Tim O'Shenko's won enough where you have to assume if he's doing it, it's the right play. Uh, now, if you're Frank Casella, you're at a guessing game if he's got something or if he doesn't. If he's just making a play. Because you didn't bet yourself on the flop, you're at a total guess now as to what this guy's got. And you just have bottom pair. Well, he's calling. Well, he thinks Timoshenko was at it, obviously. Calling with bottom pair. His problem's going to be whatever comes off on the turn, what's he going to do if the guy fires another bet? And an eight comes off. Timoshenko was taking the lead. He now has two eights. Check. I think if you're Timoshenko here, Mike, you, you could say to yourself, I have trouble putting the guy on a jack. You'd think this eight he, looks good. You'd think you'd have got re raised if he had two jacks. Yeah. On the other hand, if he's still playing a big duke, you've still got a hand you can draw to, and you may have the best hand. Well, Tamashenko afraid that he might be checking a monster duke there, so he's going to take that free card off. Well, now an ace comes off. Tamashenko is not going to like that card because there's a chance Casella could have two aces now. And look at this, Frank Casella just seems like he's aware of the situation that somehow Timoshenko's got some middling kind of pair. And if I bet here when an ace comes, I could win this pot. One, three, five. What a bet by Casella here. Really is understanding the situation and seemingly knows what his opponent's got. Going to put pressure on him to see if he'll call with that middle pair. Evgeny in a worried tank here. Thinker pose. If I was sitting in Timoshenko's seat, it would look like two aces to me. I'd probably lay this hand down. I think it's very difficult to make this call. Absolutely. Casella's done well here. And if Casella can get this through, this is the biggest bluff he's made tonight. Well, and what a time he saved for it. I'll tell you the truth. Give him credit for reading that hand properly, putting Tamashenko on some kind of middle pair, and just trying to take it away when the ace pops up on the river. You know, Frank Casella, he deserves this. He deserves to win this. Frank Casella is the 2010 World Series of Poker Player of the Year. Three final tables at the World Series, one near miss final table, two bracelets. I mean, a heck of a year for you, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was uh, a great year. Couldn't uh, couldn't beat it. Hope I can do it again next year. And it's not the first time, really, you've been that close. You've come so close to World Series of Poker bracelets before, and it you know it's a bit of vindication, really, taking these down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anytime you get really close and you don't win, it you know just feels that much better when you finally do break through and win one and then another. And now coming into all the other tournaments this year, is there that kind of feeling, that impetus pushing you forward? I mean, you're at the top of the world. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, and then I'm going out now and playing a lot more events uh, that, you know, maybe I wouldn't have played, spending more time on the road. Um, so putting a lot more time into poker this year than normally. So you're here for the London Poker Festival, playing lots over here? Yeah, yeah, and I love being in London. It's my favorite city in the world to visit, so I love being over here. Well, we love having you in the tournament. Thank you very much, and good luck out there. Okay, thank you. Look at Casella's chips. Look at Timoshenko's chips. Then switch the counts around. That's what could be if Casella hadn't gone above the rim to dunk Timoshenko. You're right, Jesse. That was a key pot, perhaps, in the outcome of this table. But to he... me, the fascinating thing about that pot is that, like, if Timoshenko thought that uh, Casella had a sort of sort of ace high type drawn in. Why didn't he bet the turn? You know, if he thought he had something else, why didn't he call? He changed his mind is what happened. Well, he, he did. Casella changed his mind. Once he got called on the flop after the guy checked and the guy had raised before the flop, he said, whoa, is there a chance this guy's got two kings or two aces in his hand or slow playing three jacks? That's what you're thinking about in that situation. He can't figure out why the guy wouldn't lead out and bet. Why he would be calling you on the flop after he checked and called, then checked on the turn? It looks like he's trying to trap you. Tim 
Shinko has limped in in the small blind here. Play we haven't seen in this three handed battle and Fabian trying to figure it out. He's got the jack six of hearts. Takes a flop and flops a flush draw. Tamashenko with two queens and he could get in trouble here. You're not going to put Fabian on an ace because he didn't raise pre flop. But I think what you're going to see is a bet out of Fabian here. Tamashenko has checked the queens. I believe he's checked them to check raise here. Check. Well, Fabian has checked the flush draw. Amazing. Now a six comes off. Now Fabian has two sixes and a flush draw. Tamashenko out in front with the two queens. Really going to be interesting to see how the rest of this hand is played out. Yeah, these guys stare at each other down, and Tamashenko puts a little tickler in the pot. Well, the bet is 35,000. Remember, nobody raised before the flop. So this is just a little over half the size of the pot. Fabian could decide his hand is so good there's not much reason to raise that Timoshenko might be just airballing it and let's uh, let's let him give a, have another barrel. Deuce of diamonds comes off. <clears throat> I think Timoshenko can make a value bet here. Well he has to decide what he's going to get called by. Is it a six. Could it be a queen with a higher kicker. I think either way you have to make a little bet anyway. Well the guy called him on the turn. Check check. Well, it's queen. going check check. The queens are going to win the pot but no value bet out of Tamashenko there. Might have got called with the two sixes that he made a small bet there. casella has got. Just a little more than the 33. But close and Timoshenko, there's there's not even a breath in them between them. Well, Timoshenko's picked up a nice hand. He's gonna play this pot and go with anybody that raises him if that happens. Must be nice to run good here. That's what all these players are hoping for right now. Ooh, well, Fabian's got the kind of hand you like to play too. Tamashenko has made the minimum raise here up to 80,000. It's not a horrible hand to move all in with, Mike, because if you get unlucky and run into something, get called, you're unlikely to be dominated. I think he's going wow, he is going all in here. All in. As you said, Thinks he's going to have two live cards at worst if he does get called. And ironically, if Fabian had folded, I think Casella might very well have shoved. Timoshenko would actually rather be facing Frank. Now, but uh, ironically, had Fabian just called, there's a chance Casella could have moved over the yeah. top of both of them. Yeah. But as it is, Close all in here with a 10 9 of diamonds up against Tamashenko's ace queen. Oh, I see a 10. A 10 right on the flop. Fabian getting very lucky here. He's taking the lead. A diamond comes off. That cuts out another out sure for Tamashenko. Ace of diamonds won't win it for him now. As Quas has a flush draw. He's oh. hit the straight. But he's made the wheel on the river. Two runners to make a five a high straight. Tamashenko's going to take that pot down, I think. and that's going to do it for Fabian Quas. Yeah, well, I'm put Fabian in a barrow the and yeah. wheel him out of here. Just gave you a few extras. The German's going to be sent packing. That's it hurts when it happens that way. Good playing with you. Played pretty tough. Okay, man. Just picked yeah. the wrong time to make a move. And we've lost Fabian and in the, the worst place possible as well on the bubble. We're sorry to see you go. The chip stacks kind of made decisions automatic at this point, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. I mean, my bust out hand, I had like 15 big blinds left. And um, Yevgeny is opening obviously very wide on the button. And I think it's 
it's okay to reshove my 10-9 suited there. And yeah, he happened to have a screen and happened to win the, the almost coin flip. Yeah, and he's got quite a lot of chips out there, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. You cannot be sure with those blinds that he's going to take it down, but um, I think he's the favorite. Okay, well, sorry to see you go, and thanks very much. No problem. <laughs>
one you can decipher pretty easily if you really think about it. Well, Cassell feels pretty good about that pot. He's not far from even now. My guess is Yevgeny Timoshenko has two plans here. The first plan to try and grind a little lead while the blinds are 20-40. The second plan, if the blinds do happen to get to 30-60, then he's just going to take the big blunt end of the stick and try and batter it. And flop comes King Jack five with two hearts. Obviously no help at all to either player. Casella has checked. Tamashenko is going to bet here and win this pot. And he's got to feel good about that. Didn't like that one at all. Well, he does, Mike, because like the, the only time he's no, gotten you called did. That's what I'm uh, I didn't like that, betting uh, that flop was when Casella had top pair. So that's great news for Timoshenko because Casella can call when he has top pair every time if he wants. Like as long as he's not far. floating, Timoshenko is getting a lot of information from the way Casella plays this flop. Well, about all the great players you can think of, from the Stu Ungers on up to the Phil Ivies. They seem to raise every time on the button sure. in the heads up situation. Well, Casella's picked up a big duke here. He's got ace king on the button. Got the kind of hand he's looking to play. Yeah, that's more like it. Put mine a little action here. But can you believe this? Timoshenko's got two aces in the big blind. Folks, this is going to do it. That's right here. That, that's, a, that's a cooler, Mike. That's, well, that's just. This is called a cooler plus, folks. This poor guy, Casella, I mean, can you imagine picking up the ace king head up and only being 7% before the flop? That's just, I mean, that's just cruel. Well, if he raises one ounce, it's all going in the pot. I don't think there's any chance that Timoshenko would slow play here. Mike, he knows Casella's not raising all the time. There's a very good chance Casella does have something he likes. No, I agree with you. He's going to raise. Timoshenko knows this guy doesn't make many continuation bets unless he hits a hand. He's hoping he's got something here he's going to shove with. And in fact, that's exactly the case. Timoshenko's going to find himself over a 90% favorite in. to win this tournament. Music to his ears. You talk about a cooler, folks. This is it. Two aces versus ace king. Aces? Kissel, I can't believe it. Jesus yeah. Christ. Wow. Nice hand. Yeah, That's, it's not Jesus. fair. And uh, Casella, of course, he's <laughs> all in here. <laughs> and he's going to have the turbo, well, but he feels pretty match, hard sir. done by. Well, against so any other hand, including two kings, he's only going to be about a two to one week. dog. Right. Yeah. As it is, so is he's over a 90% favorite to win this so pot. Yeah. I'm talking about Temeshenko. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm got a one in ten chance clubs well it's what are better now club. actually unbelievable sort of club what about a queen a lady would give him the ace high straight and the win how brutal would this be that wasn't good for Tamashenko if a queen popped off there and he lost his pot he's smiling about it well a seven comes on the river right, that's going to do it but you got to feel for Frank Casella there oh, did I nothing the wrong in this entire heat virtually yeah. And unfortunately for him, Ace King yeah. against Ace is like our fourth hand heads up. Well, fifth hand heads it's up. no mystery why so Casella got Player of the Year at the World yeah. Series, and it's no do. mystery either. I could have folded, I guess. Well, another young superstar moving to the Don't final, Jesse. Wow, how great is that table going to be? I knew you had a good hand. Well, the poker gods have decided that Frank has not done quite enough yet to reach the final table. You go to the runners-up heat to try to get there. But what a brutal cooler, that last hand, right? Yeah, that was a pretty tough way to finish. I mean, especially since we only played, I think, maybe half a dozen hands heads up. Um, him and I had been playing pretty tight all day, so I felt like it was going to – it had the potential to go a while, but that hand just plays itself. There's nothing I can do. Not a bad way to finish the day for Yevgeny. Uh, aces versus ace king. Obviously, your decisions were clear, but how good did it feel looking down at that hand? It felt it felt good. The best thing about that was um, when you get aces, it's really unlikely your opponent picks up uh, a real hand because you have two of the aces, so it's kind of tough for him to 
get something. So for him to get East King was just a dream spot. Well, hopefully it goes as well for you in the final. Thanks very much. Thanks. Congratulations to Yevgeny Timoshenko. He secures his seat at the final, and now only one place remains. Join us next time when the six runners-up will come together for the last chance saloon, all vying for that final spot at the championship table and a chance to take home the $200,000 top prize here at the Party Poker World Open 6 at the Palm Beach Casino in London. Marty, tell us a story. Are you bluffing this button? Yeah. I wanted to see the other one. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out really well. This was a little different, though. I was ahead the whole way. That was a good idea I had. See you later now. <laughs> it helps if you scream at the car. I'll do it better that way. Though. And the thrills just keep on coming.